looking back, I think I got to the point where I couldn't drink any more. I hit what I now know was uh, a rock bottom, a point of surrender, which was brought on by my wife, my second wife, and two children coming to me and saying, we can't live with you anymore. This, is, this has got to stop. If you don't, if you don't s stop drinking, then we're leaving you or you're, you're leaving us. And it was a, a nuclear option. The following day, I, went, I made an appointment with, with my GP. The GP, after some exploratory questioning, uh, expert questioning, I, I realise now, um, put me on a, a suicide watch and gave me two options. One was to go on to pills and psychotherapy and um, institutions. Uh, down the psychiatric side, and the other side was to go down the red nose route, which was t to deal with my alcoholism. And I knew fundamentally that I was that that was my problem. I, I didn't know anything about it, but I I kind of sensed deep down that that was my problem. So I opted for the alcohol recovery route, and I ended up here in the priory. You know, these problems affected a lot of other people and I wasn't special in any way at all. I was just one of a number of people that w were on the floor really and needed help. And, um, and I think that's what this place, uh, the Priory, the staff, the therapists, do for people like me here. They, they introduce us to not a, a new sort of normality and we become, I suppose, like fledglings who can start to repair, start to heal ourselves with, with the expert help and tuition that we get from here. An addict will always try and deflect and, 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 and bat away anything that points at the finger at, at their root problem, at the cause for their malaise, their disease. I suppose we become experts at that. And that's why at the end, I think, we tend to isolate because we then get into a, an iconoclastic sort of silo where nobody can question us, nobody can tell us we're wrong. Um, so it's very, very important, I think, to come into a place where you can slowly start to let the pain and the fear out. And and then you can start to grow. When you're an addict, I think you, you fail. You, you do not have choices you, you, because you are fixated on whatever it is, your drug of choice. You must have that. That is in your mind all the time. I have got to get that. I think the therapist tried to get us to look at ourselves and express ourselves and be honest and also to share, to come out, to come out of our shells. Um, and I found that difficult, but the way the day is structured gives you waypoints and we go almost, I was going to use the word herd, but it's like being, having classrooms, it's like having structure and, and I think the structure is very useful because you know, I think at the end of one's drinking, well, certainly I was isolating and not wanting to see any, any other people. So we're put into an environment where we, we have to share and we have to listen. Some people come in kicking and screaming and screaming. Some people think that it's, um, it's going to be like a, a holiday camp or something. Some people, I think, are deluded and think that, they, that it, it's in some way glamorous. Uh, and some people, I think, and I would put myself in this, are really have reached the end of the road and need this very, very badly. And, uh, and I would say, but I, I, you know, this is only me, I, I would say that you have to be pretty desperate to, 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 to make, to really make this work for you. And, and I was desperate. And, you know, nearly seven years down the line now, this, this has worked for me.